I am Professor Talat Ahmed, uh, a professor of geology at the Department of Geology, Delhi University, and presently Vice Chancellor of Jamia Milia Islamia. Today we are discussing uh, about uh, the petrology of igneous rocks. The igneous rocks are those rocks that form on the surface or below the surface because of the partial melting that takes place uh, in the uh, crust or in the mantle. So we will be discussing more based on the diagrams and uh, mineralogies of different rock types. As we have discussed earlier, the igneous rocks are those rocks which are formed by partial melting of any rock, be it igneous or metamorphic or sedimentary present uh, in the source region which could be crustal or which could be uh, mantle or lithospheric. So we have to uh, understand how the mineralogy and petrology of the rocks uh, are controlled because of dif different conditions of emplacement and uh, extrusion. Igneous rocks are basically formed on the, the maximum amount of rocks that are formed are uh, along the mid-ocean ridges uh, where we have melting of the upper mantle and uh, high degrees partial melting gives rise to basalts and high magnesium basalts of which uh, this is the major constituent of the uh, ocean floor or ocean floor basalt. These rocks are also known as alkaline basalt when it comes from deeper sources. When, when the magma is generated at uh, lower mantle, upper mantle boundary or slightly above that, as we know that the higher the pressure, the lower will be the degrees of partial melting. So alkaline rocks which comes from deeper sources has to represent very, very low degrees partial melting. But because of depth, the pressure is very, very high. So their movement of the magma is much faster and that keeps the pristine uh, conditions and pristine uh, character uh, of these alkaline rocks. Now, when, the, when we talk about the lithosphere, which also includes both uh, the part of the crust as well as part of the upper mantle, it is called lithosphere. Lithosphere is that part which uh, is supposedly the oldest part or oldest part uh, in terms of the age of the uh, source rock. So, uh, these are also repository of lots of uh, elements which are radiogenic. So lithosphere has lots of radiogenic minerals and metals uh, which will uh, actually generate lots of heat and then when it is added by the heat from the upper mantle or the movement of mantle plumes or adiabatic uh, uprise, then there is uh, melting in the lithosphere. So lithosphere will give rise from the depth more alkaline rocks and when it comes to the shallower levels, it will give rise to more basaltic and even granitic rocks. And uh, similarly, there are different conditions when, it, when we talk about the mid-ocean ridge basalt, it is more of an extensive regime. 
now when these rocks are carried from the ocean ridges to the uh, subduction zone they will be subducted because they become cold they become cold and they are uh, older so they are uh, subducted and then again heated up once they are heated up and because they have been hydrous because they have been interacting with the water which is present above the ocean floor they are quite hydrous so they melt partially much faster compared to a dry condition so when these rocks are uh, taken to some depth in the subduction zone they release fluids and also they release melt which goes and also enrich the area which is sitting above the subduction zone and uh, that area once they get these melts and fluids their melting temperature also goes down so they will also generate magma so you will have magma uh, along the island arcs where you receive magma from the subducting slab as well as from the slab which is above uh, the subduction zone so you will have presence of bimodal volcanics okay mineralogically they will be same they will be basalt they may be granite they may be andesite okay but they are generated at different conditions tectonic conditions and to understand these uh, we have to study the trace elements to identify different uh, tectonic regimes where they have been generated when they are generated from the uh, uh, asthenosphere or upper mantle uh, near the ocean ridges they will be depleted in terms of the light rarers and large iron lithophile elements when they are generated at the subduction zone they will be enriched uh, because subduction zone will carry lots of fluids will come out and these light rarers and the large iron lithophile elements they go into the melt phase and the generated rock is uh, more enriched so they are all basalts or andesites but different in terms of the trace elements but similar in terms of the major elements and mineralogically also some of them will be having more of amphiboles representing uh, presence of water and some of them will be dry so as also we have discussed in our earlier lecture that these rocks igneous rocks are uh, generated at depth and they can come to the surface as lava flows or they can come uh, uh, and get deposited and melt and uh, freezes at depth so when they are freezing at depth they are known as plutonic rocks and the ones which comes out on the surface they are the volcanic rocks so now let us discuss one by one the major igneous rock types as you can see that the whole earth if you divide the continental crust where we stay mostly they are mostly intermediate to acidic more of granite and granodiorite whereas if you go to the ocean floor the rocks are mostly basaltic so basically the ocean floor has rocks which are more uh, heavier and denser because of the presence of iron and magnesium compared to the continental crust where it is more of a sialic rocks which is silica and alumina rich rocks so they will be having different mineralogies we will be showing you some of the rock slides and how the mineral looks like and then we will discuss about uh, their occurrences and their uh, important characters so what we see here 
is the one of the most common uh, igneous rocks of plutonic origin that is the rocks which are uh, crystallizing at depth granite is one of the most common which is a uh, silica rich rock and as you can see here that they have minerals which are mostly uh, k feldspar or orthoclase and also you can see some of the uh, biotite and muscovite uh, and some of the amphiboles. So, these are the common minerals that is available uh, in the granitic rock. As I explained to you, the granitic rocks are derived uh, from the crustal sources in different tectonic settings. So, the most common being subduction zone environment or the island arc environment where we have the granite pluton uh, at depth and on the surface we have the rhyolite. So, this is the mineralogy uh, as I explained to you and you have lots of quartz in this, uh, feldspars, k feldspars and uh, mica uh, and then also amphiboles. So, the next slide, the next very common uh, igneous rock which is plutonic is known as gabbro. So, gabbro is the equivalent of basalt and they are mafic rocks based on the minerals or based on geochemistry they are called basic rocks. So, what we see here is they are mostly plagioclase and pyroxene rich rock. Since this is a plutonic rock it has big crystals of plagioclases even in some cases you will see the tuning is very clear but at places uh, you, you will also have uh, presence of quartz which is not so common but they are present in many cases and gabbros are uh, the rocks which are produced in very uh, different tectonic environments. Uh, when it comes out at the ocean floor, uh, they, they are equivalent to the N type morb or normal morb. When they extrude uh, as a continental flood basalt, uh, they are called continental flood basalt and its equivalent at depth is the continental uh, gabbro. And the third place where they are commonly seen is at the island arc or the subduction zone uh, where they occur sometimes uh, as bimodal volcanics with acidic and basic rocks. So, so, gabbro and granite on one hand and basalt and rhyolite on the other hand. So, which is very common uh, rock assemblage seen. Uh, 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 in the subduction zone environment or uh, arc environment. Now, the other major rock types which is intermediate, so from more basic to more acidic, so this is in between uh, intermediate rocks where you have both plagioclase as well as feldspars, uh, k feldspars. And there are also presence of sphene for example and then there will be some pyroxene, some amphiboles. So, it is a intermediate rocks, its equivalent uh, as a uh, extrusive rock is andesite. So, they are mostly restricted uh, to island arcs and subduction zone environment. Now, there is very interesting rock known as peridotite where you can see that all these green ones are the uh, olivine. So, it is olivine rich rock with some pyroxenes and uh, very rare plagioclase. So, these are ultramafic rocks where you have sometimes 60 to 70 percent of olivine and pyroxene and uh, they represent very high temperature melt when they uh, intrude as a plutonics 
they form periodontite when it comes to the surface uh, they can be uh, commotite they can be commotitic basalt so very very high magnesian rocks so high magnesian uh, is reflected by the presence of uh, these uh, big crystals of olivine which you can see here very commonly many times uh, we also see olivine as phenocryst in the olivine basalt which we can show in some other slides now thin section of basalt as you can see here that they are mostly plagioclase and some pyroxene uh, th this is uh, uh, highly magnified otherwise they are very very fine grained rocks uh, but you can see that they still have very clear presence of plagioclase with twins and as I told you that this will be equivalent to gabbros when, when they are plutonic. So these are decite. So decite is uh, equivalent to granodiorite. So here you will have more plagioclase uh, and then uh, some pyroxene, some amphiboles uh, and they are composition wise they are intermediate rocks. So, and this is uh, the slide uh, of andesite, as I told you that andesites are extrusive rocks, which are very fine grained, you can see that the ground mass is very fine, almost glassy, with some phenocrysts of pyroxene and uh, also some plagioclases. So, these are uh, uh, rocks which are very, very common. Uh, in subduction zone environment or the island arcs. So presence of andesite itself indicates that uh, the tectonic scenario had something to do with the subduction of the ocean crust under the continental crust. So many times uh, we will see also mixing of the material from the continental crust and their presence as phenocryst. Uh, in the andesite. Okay, this is uh, rhyolite. Rhyolite is the rock which is equivalent to granite, and uh, this is very very fine grained. As you can see, that these are all mostly glassy, with uh, some of these uh, as titanates and uh, magnetite uh, crystals, and. They, they are having silica percentage more than 70 percent, mostly quartz, mostly quartz and some uh, K feldspar. So uh, it depends actually, uh, it can be very, very light in color and also very, very light weight because it has uh, very few uh, mafic minerals uh, and uh, because of that they are equivalent to the granite when it is crystallizing at depth and when it extrudes on the surface. Many times on the uh, uh, island arc tectonic scenario, rhyolites and basalt, they occur together with andesite. So the presence of rhyolite, andesite and basalt in any uh, area indicates the presence uh, of subduction zone in the past in this area. The best example is the Ladakh arc which has all these components that has been discussed just now. Alright, so we have seen how the igneous rocks are generated, how they evolve and it is possible that mineralogically they may be similar from different tectonic settings, but when it comes to the trace elements and many times even the rare earths and major elements, there is a different and that is because of the presence or absence of water. So for example, when we, when we discuss the presence of Deccan traps which is present in India, in the western part of India. Uh, it is a typical continental arc rock, uh, continental basalt, flood basalt. 
if you see the chemistry of these rocks, they are more enriched. Similarly, when you go into details of trace elements, what you see is that it has interacted with the lithosphere because the magma which is generated from the uh, ma uh, mantle, it comes out, it interacts with the rocks of the crust and takes some of the signatures from the crust. Whereas same basaltic rocks, if you take from the ocean uh, floor, it does not interact with any continental rock because there is no continent available on the ocean. So, the ocean uh, rocks come out without any interaction with the material from the continent will have a totally different chemistry. It is uh, known as more uh, depleted type basalt. So, they are all basalts whether it is ocean floor basalt or continental flood basalt or even island arc basalt, but they are all different in terms of their mineralogy, in terms of their uh, trace element chemistry. To some extent the major element chemistry, they are similar, okay, because of that they are called basalt and even minerals, there will be some accessory minerals which indicates presence or absence of volatiles and water. So, these are some of the information which will help us to understand because when we go to field, we just see the rocks. We do not know whether uh, say for example, if we go a Precambrian terrain, we do not know that these rocks which were formed were part of an island arc or that was part of a oceanic crust or it was part of a uh, simple flood basalt province. So, this type of petrological studies is very important to decipher the tectonic scenario of the rocks that we study. So, we have to look at the mineralogy, we have to look at the petrology, we have to look at the geochemistry to understand the genesis of a rock. So, we can summarize uh, that based on different diagrams that we discussed. Uh, that the igneous rocks are classified first as plutonic and volcanic. The plutonic rocks are those rocks that crystallizes at some depth and it gives enough time for the magma uh, to slowly crystallize and give rise to bigger crystals in the presence of volatiles. The same magma, when it comes to the surface of the earth, it comes out and extrudes as lava flow. The cooling is so fast that they do not get time to crystallize bigger crystals. Uh, many times they will be just having glass and with some very, very minute crystals. So, the Mineralogy is not available for the uh, more uh, volcanic rocks compared to the plutonic rocks. So, we have to uh, use different techniques to describe these rocks based on the mineralogy, petrology and geochemistry of rocks to understand their genesis.